Hi everyone, this is Colleen Fitzwater from the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance. Today, I'm with Dr. Peter Simpson, one of our newest scientific advisory board members and the first from Australia. Dr. Simpson is Associate Professor at the University of Queensland Center for Clinical Research, where he holds a joint teaching and research position. Dr. Simpson, thanks for taking the time to introduce yourself to the LBCA community through this video. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here, Colleen. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So first question for you. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about your background? Sure. Um, yes. So I'm, uh, I'm actually from uh, the United Kingdom. Um, I moved to Australia about 16, 17 years ago. So I, I grew up in a very small village in the United Kingdom, very picturesque countryside uh, uh, village and um, which was a very idyllic sort of childhood for, for myself um, and which was really awesome um, experience for me, very clean, fresh air and lots of outdoor activities. So it was a really nice kind of um, time to grow up. Um, and I, I moved to Liverpool, the city of Liverpool, which you'll probably all know about, a um, very historic city for my university training and I did my PhD in Liverpool so I spent something like eight or nine years in in Liverpool um, and that's where I got interested in studying breast cancer so I did my PhD in Liverpool and then I, I moved to London in 2001 um, to do my first postdoctoral research um, position um, with a uh, pathologist named Professor Sunil Lakhani. Um, so that was in 2001 and I had a four or five years postdoctoral experience with Sunil in London and then I moved to Australia actually with Sunil. So we came together in 2005 and, I, and I've been here ever since. Dr. Simpson, can you tell me about what you and your team are currently working on? Sure. Um, so yeah, we have a number of projects like most research groups do, and um, we have a number of projects about lobular breast cancer. Um, one particular project that your um, community might know about is what we call LOBSIG, which is a, a, a project that I spoke about at the last um, International Lobular Breast Cancer meeting. Um, and it's a project that we've been developing for some time, um, and we're pretty excited about it. So we we have developed um, an assay that we think we hope could be useful in a clinic for predicting um, the prognosis for lobular breast cancer patients. So it's a bit like um, molecular assays that people use in the clinic at the moment, but the difference here is that we've developed it with lobular breast cancer in mind. So it's, it's quite specific to lobular um, disease. So we're working through um, trying to um, validate or make sure that the assay that we have developed is robust in a local cohort of patients before we extend it to um, international collaboration. So you mentioned LOBSIG. Why did you decide to focus your work specifically on lobular breast cancer? Yeah, so I've been interested in lobular breast cancer for a long time, and my interest was sparked when I joined um, Professor Lakani's research group back in 2001. He had um, a number of different research streams at the time, and um, I was assigned to the lobular stream, so it was an interest of his. And I've been mentored by him um, for a long time since that point. So we have a very nice um, relationship. So a, he's a clinician, a pathologist, and, a, and I'm a scientist. So we have that nice um, relationship, scientist-clinician relationship. So we, we do some nice um, collaborative research together. So he had a strong interest in lobular breast cancer, and I've learned from him and others um, about the importance of this, of this subtype of breast cancer. And I, and I was reflecting recently about um, a grant that I wrote. It was probably about 10 years ago. And I got feedback. It didn't get funded. And I got feedback 
um, to say that the, the grant was good, but it was a shame that lobular breast cancer wasn't um, important enough or um, more frequent to warrant funding. Wow. And, and so, yeah, we had this, I guess there was this perception that because it was only 15% of breast cancers or um, that, the, that it, perhaps it, that it was a low grade tumor, that it wasn't impacting clinically or patients enough. And so that, that perception was obviously wrong and it affects as many people as um, ovarian cancer or triple negative breast cancer. And so maybe the way we were um, trying to persuade the grant reviewers wasn't appropriate, wasn't enough or hard hitting enough. Um, but that really struck me that that was the perception around there, um, around lobular breast cancer. And, and there's been a number of studies um, even before that, but also since to show that um, it's a really important disease. It has a really um, affects a lot of patients, a lot of women, um, and the, the biology is different to other types of breast cancer. So we really do need to think of it as a separate disease and, and advocate for research and advocate for patients um, in, in a different way to other um, breast cancers. And you really, I think, already touched on this, but I'll ask the question. So in your opinion, why is ILC-specific research important? Yeah, it's crucial because of that idea that it has a different biology. We, we know that patients um, diagnosed with lobular breast cancer, um, the risk of recurrence is, is ongoing for, for many years. And the response to chemotherapy is different. Um, the mechanisms of resistance to... So there's obviously some overlaps with ER-positive breast cancers. Um, but, but the biology is different. There's a different sort of pattern of metastasis. Um, so we really need to dedicate a lot of work to specifically focus on, on, on lobular breast cancer. And, and that's why the, um, the conference that was organized, the dedicated lobular breast cancer conference was so important um, to get a kind of a, I guess from there, there's been a bit of a growth in terms of a community of lobular breast cancer researchers um, um, and, and the sort of ad advocacy for patients um, has, has been really, really important. It's interesting that actually since we published our LOBSIG paper a couple of years ago, we've had a lot of patients email myself or my colleagues who were on the paper. Um, wanting to know more about the assay, whether they can have the assay done on their tumor sample. So there's, there's a clear need for lobular specific research. Patients are crying out for it and, um, and the community, scientific and clinical community are crying out for more, more knowledge. Why were you interested in becoming a member of LBCA's scientific advisory board? It was a it was a great honor to be invited to join the scientific advisory board um, and that sort of came about through the conference that I was talking about um, meeting Steffi and Otto in Pittsburgh and then having the second meeting last year. I think it's really important for this advocacy for patients and for research that we advocate for more funding and dedicated funding for lobular breast cancer and um, and to be involved in the scientific advisory board um, means that I'll be able to um, help educate patients about this this can this disease and I'll be able to help um, advocate for more research and more exposure about why research in this tumor type is important you mentioned the ILC symposium 
And as I mentioned, you're the first member of the Scientific Advisory Board from Australia. I know that at the ILC Symposium this year, the big word was collaboration. Why do you think that cross-lab and cross-continent collaboration among ILC researchers is important and necessary? Yeah, it's critical really um, to, to have these this community of researchers interested in the same tumor type um, to share resources and and knowledge. So the um, the, the the research that we do um, locally here it's it's has challenges in terms of funding and collating clinical specimen resources which so we can at, at the moment we're trying to test the validity of our lobsig assay in a local cohort of patient samples and then when we've um, shown that we are happy with the assay that really the the numbers of samples that we're able to analyze is quite small so we'll we will be reaching out um to our um colleagues around the world to expand that um assay development um we've had um discussions with colleagues already about that um so when we're when we're ready, when we've gone through enough um, development here, we'll be able to then extend it to larger co cohorts of patient samples um, through that international collaboration. So it's really critical that we are able to do that, um, to, 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 to know that the data that we're getting is, is um, trustworthy. Great, thank you. So Dr. Simpson, that's all the questions I have for today. I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to be introduced to our Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance community. And I wish you luck with your research moving forward and I look forward to working with you. Well, th thank you very much. And it's been a pleasure chatting to you, Colleen. And I I'd like to thank the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance for all the advocacy that they do um, in North America, but also around the world. Thank you. Thank you.